Uh, but like I say, these are things that you learn as being a traveler. And uh, it's good that you tour, be the tourist. I think you have to be a tourist to learn to be a traveler. That, I think that's a good way to learn to be a traveler. I'm not quite sure. Like I say, I started right from the very start of being a traveler. And uh, like I say, uh, I was taught uh, because we owned our own businesses, we were frugal with our money, and we uh, service uh, travelers and tourists. See, so uh, we're never doing that stuff. We are servicing these people. And uh, that's, I guess that explains another reason why my family, they always thought I was a little weird because, like I say, I wasn't, had no problem working, learning all this stuff, and then taking my money and going off and experiencing things. And they thought, boy, you're wasting all your money. And that's what they said. They said, man, when you get old, you're not going to have any money uh, because you're wasting it all now. That, that could be true, except, like I said, uh, I, I'm, I don't read. So, hey. Uh, I don't read, so I have to experience it. And so my knowledge improves a lot as I experience. And I've applied what I've learned. And that's why I've got, well, I don't have money. I still don't have any money, but I don't need money. And uh, like I say, I, I use gold and silver. And like I say, I apply my skills and abilities and we talk, I talked about barter, learning barter and stuff like that. This is what I learned. That's why I don't need and use money like everybody else does. And I say now I'm 67 years old. This is the time when most 67-year-olds are using all the money that they've saved up and stuff like that. And I say so far I just uh, keep accumulating uh, more gold and silver. I don't want stuff. Uh, I, I mean, then that. I don't know. I guess I just, I've learned to go without stuff. I don't need stuff. I've learned to go without using money. Uh, like I say now, this tourist thing, it was all money. I mean, everything I did was 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 money. Uh, so uh, that's one reason why I know why I don't do tourist stuff. Um, uh, because like I say it's everything is con con continuous money. The only thing is, it's really, really cheap down here. It's really, really cheap. Uh, I need to figure how much it took. I, I talked about the, and I gave prices on the food, um, the hotel room, uh, the shuttle. I don't think I talked about the cost of the shuttle. And I didn't take any pictures of the shuttle either. Uh, like I say, I don't, my, I didn't really take good pictures of my tourist thing. And the thing is, uh, I'm not a tourist. I, I don't like uh, having my camera up, taking pictures of everybody and, and stuff like that. I don't like when people, when you know, walk along and people are taking pictures of you all the time. I don't like it, so I didn't, I didn't do it. What I did do is I used my tablet and I would turn it on and I would just hold it down to my side like that and walk. And uh, I would take pictures. Uh, like that. Really the best would be for me to hold it up like I'm holding it up now and talk and, and here show you this and talk about stuff like that. That'd be the best. But like I say I'm not comfortable doing that to, to others. I know they're there for their vacation. Uh, it's their time to get away and the last thing they want is some, some dork, some clown sticking a camera in their face. You know, so. And, and they're doing it all the time. Another thing I couldn't believe is everybody's on their cell phones. Everybody's on their cell phones all the time. Uh, I think that's really weird, too. I'll probably do the same thing if I was in the States. But, uh, but I say, mine's for work. I mean, I got to, people are trying to get a hold of me all the time when I'm in the States. And uh, so, uh, but anyway, I'm still evaluating. I don't know if I'm going to make any more. Uh, videos on uh, this trip related on this particular trip. Uh, I think I covered a lot of it. Uh, like I say, uh, I, I learned a lot, uh, and I'm sure it's stuff that other people 
don't plan on learning. Uh, but I say I, I, I want to learn about people. I like to I like people. I want to learn how um, people behavior is and the stuff. And this is what gives me I've got an advantage over a lot of people because, like I say, I do know human behavior. Uh, I know human behavior mainly when it comes to uh, violence, uh, fear, and this type of stuff, because that's really what I specialize in. Uh, I say so, uh, this being nice kind of stuff, this nice world where everything is pleasant and everything is perfect, is kind of new to me. And it was kind of strange, because everybody felt safe. And I thought, boy, that's kind of, kind of a weird feeling when you, when you just take it for granted you're safe. And like I say, now I am preparing, because in the United States, everybody's like that in the United States. And that's why everybody says, well, how can you go down to a third world country? And like I tell people, I've shot more people in the United States than I have down here. You know, so. Uh, and this is what's going on in the United States. Uh, for people to feel safe, where they say you, you give away your liberty for safe, for security. And um, I've never had that problem. Because <laughs> I have used my liberty to learn how to take care of myself. So I'm not, I'm not willing to give up any of my freedoms for I don't care how much you want to care for me. Obamacare. Okay, that's, you, that's one more step. We're going to socialism. And, you know, I, I can see it with these tourists. They are, somebody is caring for them all the time. That's what's going on in the United States. You, as Americans, expect to be cared for. And uh, you keep doing it by giving up your liberties. Uh, seatbelt. I had somebody talking the same thing about the seatbelt. Saying, well, you know, you need to have the seatbelt. You know, and I said, uh, and he was talking about how the, you know, the, the airbags saved his life. And I'm sure it saved many lives. I am sure. Now, now the difference is me being able to get out of the car fast has saved my life more than any airbag has. Now, I'm sure there's other people that have been in more car wrecks. Well, that's because they didn't take personal responsibility. Like I say, I told you I didn't get any wrecks, any major wrecks when I was running around down here. And that's because I, I took personal responsibility because I knew if something was to happen, if I was to get in an accident, I don't know what you would do. It would it'd be that bad. And so uh, I had to take personal responsibility. And I continue that in my whole life. And so when you're taking that personal responsibility, then the idea of government taking care of you is, how is the government going to take care of me? <laughs> you know, if I'm taking personal responsibility for myself, I say I've owned my own businesses, I make my own money, I make my own life, I take care of my own life, and all the people around me explain to me how I need the, any kind of protection from the government. Do I need their uh, financial protection? Do I need their uh, hospitalization time protection? Uh, um, uh, do I need the protection from walking down the street? You know what I mean? Uh, when you take personal responsibility, you cover all that kind of stuff. And I do believe now, I do believe as being a traveler, Especially, and I've had people say, well, you're a world traveler. I'm not a world traveler. Uh, I just pretty much stay in uh, uh, Latin America, Mexico, uh, and uh, the northern hemisphere, of, uh, or the western hemisphere, I guess, whatever, whatever it is. But, uh, but Europe and Asia, well, I've been to Asia, I guess so, but I really didn't travel in Asia. Now, uh, um, I am thinking on uh, Europe and how I would handle Europe. And I say, all oh, this is one step closer, one step closer. It's supposed to be easier to travel 
in Europe, especially public transportation. That's something else I don't do. And that's why this uh, shuttle public transportation is a little, little strange to me. Uh, but the, I say the people from Europe was telling me it's, it's easier in Europe to take public transportation. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not real good on being part of the livestock as you're being moved around. Uh, because I say everything they do, everything that you talk about on um, public transportation and, and uh, public housing, uh, um, public safety, public anything, everything that I, I can think of right off the bat on public anything is the same way we take care of our cattle. It's the same way uh, chickens and turkeys and uh, pigs and all these uh, livestock is taken care of. It's the same way. Uh, I am so individual. I think so much. I can think. And I do think. And uh, I share my thoughts. Uh, right or wrong. And I'm willing to pay the price when I'm wrong. Um, animals, they don't. They, you breed it out of them. The troublemakers, you kill, you, you slaughter them. And the ones that are more calm and relaxed, you keep rebreeding them because you want them nice and calm. And I'm wondering maybe, is that what's going on in, not only in the United States, but in the world? You know, I mean, is that what the vaccines are for? I mean, we're so nice, we're giving vaccines to these third world countries. And I've noticed that these third world countries now, they're, they've mellowed out <laughs> a lot. Wow. And they're so easily victimized. And why? Uh, they will... A uh, good example is Honduras. Honduras, uh, these guys, they go to the United States, they can't find work. I'm talking about that, I was talking to one of them. And uh, he can't find work, and he needed money, he said he'll do anything. Even if you want somebody killed, just tell him, he'll kill him. Uh, but he needs to make money. And so uh, they do that, and then they kill, they do all kinds of stuff. They kill, rape, they go crazy, and then uh, the United States deports them, uh, send them back to Central America or whatever. Now they've learned skills that they can apply to the population down here. That's why I say, it, and that's why it's funny, because these people are, are really, I mean, they're timid. They really are. Uh, they're easily victimized. And the thing is, these people go to the United States, they learn violence, they learn being nasty, and then they come back, and it's just like children, man, they can just walk all over anybody. And then they come across somebody like me, and then that's when they have, you know, they don't realize, you know, the young, dumb ones, they've been victimizing everybody so much, they just take it for granted they can do it to anybody. And then they find some old guy, and they can just think they can do it to some old guy. They don't realize there are people <laughs> like me that refuse to be a victim and have made plans and have prepared. And when that happens, well, the population of the victims really drops down. And that's what I'm doing in the United States in the community I'm up there at, at up there is uh, not everybody is macho and all this kind of, and that's, we don't need everybody macho. We need people that don't want to be victims, that are willing to take the steps to ensure their own freedoms. And that's taking personal responsibility. And that's why I talk about all this in the three-man militia. The gardening, the first aid, uh, food, uh, just all kinds of stuff. These are all things that I've learned through my travels. This is Mike. No stress, Mike. <laughs> Dot com.